question. Got it, Michelle. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, first, I'll start by saying thank all of you guys for um, covering us on Zoom. I feel like we have a, a nice little crew here. We, we have our, it's like my, uh, it's like Patty with her college roommates do their weekly Zoom meeting. I feel like I do it with you guys, but I, I appreciate your, um, your covering us and your, your passion and your, just your professionalism all year. Thank you for that. And, um, you know, with, with that said, we, we, um, we're back here on campus. We, we all met today as a team. And, um, you know, we're, 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 we're proud of this group. And, and I think as I, I've said to you, um, you know, this season was just gonna be about, you know, individually each guy trying to be his best and, and us get, get through this and everybody mentally stay healthy, physically stay healthy. And, you know, when I say physically, I mean, because of the pandemic, you know, the basketball injuries that we endured are normal, but I think for the most part, we did that. And um, I, I, I think this, the season was a, was a huge success because of the way we just endured. And, and you know, I, I, I'll, whatever we talk about here basketball wise, I don't want to, I'm very, very impressed with the these young men and, and what they have um, overcome. But I, I never, and none of us, players or myself, want that to be compared to what people in our country are going through in terms of dealing with COVID-19 and deaths and loss of loved ones and jobs. And uh, that that's far greater sacrifices far greater challenges than what we've gone through. But given what these young guys have gone through, I am very proud of them. All right, we will go for questions. If anybody has any for coach, please raise your hand or write in the chat and we will get to you. Joe, start us off. Hey, Jay. Hey, Joe, Joe. Thanks for your time and your availability this season. You're welcome. Um, you always have the statement, we want to be the best team we can be by the end of the season. Did you think you reached that goal? And if and did the uh, absence of practices in December and January kind of hamper that? I hope I can answer this properly. Um, if I was a writer like you guys, I could do this well. This, this is actually the the perfect example of being the best team you could be by the end of the year and the reason what we mean when we say that is given you don't know what you're going to go through during a season you know you you can say in the beginning of the season we want to win a national championship and if you know two three guys go down and you know you don't have them you can't do it you know you all you can do is be the best you could be given those circumstances and you guys know more than any, if I don't have to list all the circumstances, but given all the circumstances, I really do believe this group got to be as good as they could by the end of the year. And that's what I'm really proud of. And we've never really asked you a question about the transfer portal. There's almost a thousand kids in there right now. Um, what are your thoughts on the portal? And do you feel that maybe, maybe one or two of your kids might try it? Uh, my thoughts on the portal are that it is going to be an incredible challenge um, for all of us this year. Players, coaches, it's, it's going to be a new, um, I, it's, it's just going to be a new competition to follow, you know, for people. Um, because, you know, we're, we're all just trying to, we want to take care of our own players first. And then you have to answer the questions of the people that come to you and say they want to transfer in. And we've never done this before, especially in our program, Joe. We, we just have not been really active in this transfer environment. Um, so this is all new to us. Uh, we addressed it today with our team. Um, and, and because of the way college basketball is now, I think people are literally recruiting guys off of 
other teams. So you, you know your players are have your players have to deal with it. They're forced into it. And then we are forced into it. So we're going to try to handle it as a team the best we can, try to do the best for our players that we can and and be honest with the people that are contacting us that want to transfer. And, and I don't have a blueprint for this. We're just going to try to be honest and do the best we can. Okay, thanks, Tim. You got it. Harry, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Hey, Terry. You know, you talk about the resili these resiliency of your kids because you basically kind of had to reinvent yourself after Colin got hurt. Yeah, I, we definitely did, Terry. And, um, you know, I hate when this happens, but it happens. Losing the Georgetown game, as we look back on it, probably helped us because the practices that we had in – New York, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, were three practices where we could say, all right, look, here's the Georgetown game. This is what we look like without Colin. This is what we have to do now to change, and let's practice it. <laughs> you know, uh, it was really helpful. And then, you know, we had then three more days because we didn't play till Friday to say, this is who we're gonna be without Colin. And, and I, I think it really helped us. And, and there were some good things we did in the Providence game and the Georgetown game without Colin. There were some good things, but not good enough to win. But I think getting those practices with those two games really helped us. You know, with the, with the rule change allowing the winter sports athlete granting them a, a, another year of eligibility. Have you had this, any discussion with Colin or Jermaine about that? And if they wanted to come back, would you welcome them back? You know, I meant to respond to that with Joe's question because that's all a part of, of this transfer portal challenge is seniors that want to return. So we have Demir and his issue returning is going to be based on his health. So we're not going to be able to make that determination for a long time. Um, you know, his injuries could be such that he just can't play next year. Um, but we won't be able to, I don't know when we're going to be able to determine that. Definitely not before the summer. Um, Colin and Jermaine, we are starting those conversations now. And again, uh, there, there's a lot of variables here. What's the NBA going to do? When is the combine going to be? Are they going to have a com combine? Um, so th this thing's going to get dragged out. That this is going to. So we have started the discussions. We're trying to put a plan together. And as I said to you, the best we can do is just be honest and try to take care of our players first, and then you know be honest with the people that are contacting us that want to transfer in. Thanks, Jay. You got it. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Thanks for taking the time. Um, yeah. The uh, college landscape is forever changing, and I was just wondering with the NBA G League and, you know, offering things, how does that change recruiting for you? You know what, Pat? I'm sorry. Can you just ask that again? Um, something popped across my screen when you were asking. Oh, no trouble. All right. The, the college landscape is ever changing, and, yep. you know, they had the, you had the NBA G League, and players are choosing to go that route some. How does this change for re in recruiting for you? Um. You know what, Pat, not, it doesn't, that part doesn't change too much for us. You know, we, we are, we're very um, clear with, with our recruits about there are different paths to the NBA, you know, if, and, and that path of the G League is, is a really good one. I, I think that's a great idea. It's a really good one for certain players. Um, and, and some guys that we're recruiting, as we're discussing with them, we, we would even say to them, you know what, the G League might be a good path for you. Um, but we're, so we're always looking for the guys that want to go to college, want to learn in college, uh, academically and on the basketball court, and then want that to be their path to the NBA. And as a follow-up to that, are you all for just these different avenues? Do you like this? I mean, you like the more avenues, the better for kids. I do. I really do. I think when they feel, when they feel that they have choices 
and they're not being forced into situations, they're better when they make their choice. So the, the guy you get knows I could have gone to the G League, you know, and like Jeremiah Robinson last year, like he could have left after last year. He decided he wanted to stay. And when he made that decision, knowing he had choices, he could have left. He, they're far more invested. So I, re I really do like giving them a as many options as possible. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Adam, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, hey, sorry, Jay, can you hear me? Yep, got you. Sorry, buddy. Um, yeah, just you mentioned the combine. They did actually announce today the NBA combines June 21st to the 27th. Nice. I didn't see that. And the draft is July 29th, just so you know. Nice. Um, Thank you. I just had two. I mean, I guess I'll pose these as hypotheticals. I don't know how you know where you are on answering them, but with Kyle Neptune, um, you know, are you able to comment on what he will bring as a head coach or? you know, when he does become a head coach, what kind of head coach will he be? And with Jeremiah, you alluded the other day, you said, you know, he probably would be in the NBA next year. And if not, you'd play him at point guard next year. Um, what, what kind of player will he be in the NBA, assuming he goes? Um, I think the best thing for me to say about Kyle right now is he is definitely ready to be a head coach. And, and I will, if you want, Adam, if he is, um, announced as a head coach somewhere, I'll definitely talk about him in that institution. Sure. But I don't want to jinx anything before then. Yeah. Um, but he's ready. He's, he, you know, so many times young guys who are great recruiters get labeled as such. He is a great recruiter, but he's probably one of the best X and O guys I've had. We've had, um, this early in his career it's kind of funny he kind of drives me crazy with it but it's a good thing um i don't know if, you, if it's noticeable but sometimes you can see me on the bench tell him like shut up you know <laughs> he's got so many great suggestions and a lot of times uh, most times i listen to them but but they're always great x and o ideas and then sometimes when i'm just it's just too much you know um which is rare but it's funny because i um, because he knows I, I like to hear his X and O suggestions. I, I think he's more ready to be a head coach than most young guys X and O wise. And, and I think he's got great character, great leadership skills. I think, I think he's going to be an outstanding head coach. And with Jeremiah, just what kind of player would he be at the next level if he, if he goes, you know, I, I think he's definitely ready. Um, I think he, he has the ability to be, um, a complete player at the next level. I actually think his offensive game will fit the next level even better than it is in college. Cause he's a, he's a face up guy, an ISO guy, but he can also score in a post on any mismatch and He's a great rebounder, and, and for the position he'll play in the NBA, I think he'll be even better than college. College, he got stuck guarding five men a lot. Still was a great rebounder, but the way we played, we switched him out on point guards a lot, so he wasn't around the rim to rebound. He's out on the perimeter guard a point guard, and that's the final piece that I think is going to make him an outstanding NBA player. He can guard one through five, even in the NBA. Thanks, buddy. Good luck. Thanks, AZ. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Uh, welcome back. Probably more than being in Indianapolis right now, but, um, you know, kind of looking at the off season and, and have you really started planning out your plan heading in it? I know there's some restrictions with, you know, recruiting and, and like dead periods and all that. Have you started kind of looking at that? We, we did, you know, we did today, Austin. It's, um, it's part of uh, our our planning process right now. What's what's unique this year? You know, we always come back. Usually the next day, it happened to be a, a Sunday, so we we were all off. But we all were on the phone Sunday, and then we met today as a staff, and then we met as a team. Um, you know, to start to plan 
for the spring and what we're going to do in the summer. We, we started that planning. Um, and it's all different, you know, because you still have to, for instance, we're going to give our guys some time to go home because they haven't been home since August. Um, but then you have to plan re-entry, you know, you didn't have to do that before. And recruiting is different, you know, as we talked about with the transfer portal, that affects everybody. It affects the guys that are looking at the NBA. It affects the current players and it affects the freshmen that are coming in and it affects the next class. So it's as complicated as it's ever been. And I want to, I know we talked about the portal earlier, but I kind of just want to get your thoughts. Do you see something like this happening in the future where there's thousand kids in the portal? Do you think this is going to be the norm or do you think this is sort of a one year exception? I think this is a, a, a one year uh, explosion. Um, kind of, you know, with, I think there's a, a newness to it that is, that is that has infatuated everybody, and, and there's factors that I think the the, the players all believe they're not going to have to sit out next year. You know that's not determined yet, but I think everyone believes that um, the pandemic and everybody dealing with upperclassmen coming back in their programs. So I just think there's so many factors are added. I don't think it's going to be I don't think it's going to be this bad in the future, and I think it'll start to settle in as a normal part of college athletics in a couple of years. It won't be as crazy. All right. Thanks, Jay. Take care. Thanks, Austin. Tom, go ahead. Jay, curious, uh, you know, when you met with the team today, just what are some of the maybe life lessons you think or you want your kids to take away from a season like this? And I know it's less than 48 hours, but how did a season like this change your perspective at all on coaching? Uh, wow, John, I, I you know, there were, I did talk to the team. We, we talked to the team today about, about life lessons and, and how um, their mental toughness, their resiliency, um, their, their ability to um, focus on the obstacle ahead of them and overcoming that and not being distracted is something they can take into life um they're going to look back on this season and and look at difficult challenges and see what they've overcome and know that they can they can overcome anything um i think also a, a level of gratefulness to always appreciate um the the ability to play basketball you know it was taken away from us last spring and summer and fall i think we've all i think we've all changed through this year as human beings as players as coaches I know we've changed as coaches. Um, it, 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 we're all really grateful for the challenges. They, they've strengthened us. I think we've all learned a great deal from it. Zachary, go ahead. Hey, Jay, how are you? Got gotcha. you. Hey, Zachary. Um, when you look at all the transfers, I know you said you think this year won't be quite as, you know, extreme. Uh, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll this is probably more extreme than most years. You know, as people get used to it. But do you think it's a, uh, is it good for college basketball right now with all these people, all these guys in the portal, and you know, big name players switching teams and, and every and obviously everything that goes with it. No, I don't. I don't think it's good for college basketball, but I think it's good for the student athletes, and and that's. You know, I think that's what we're all here for. And, and I think we'll, we'll all adjust. You know, I, I don't think, um, I don't think it's going to kill college basketball. It's, it's not anything that's, um, it's, it's going to make it a little messier, but I think college basketball will be fine. Um, but I definitely think it's going to give student athletes um, a lot more choices and um, a lot more voice in, in, you know, in their careers. Jay, does, do you think guardrails need to be put in? Um, yeah, I, I do think, I, I think we'll all adjust to this. I think right now it's, it's going to be messy for a couple of years, but then I think we'll all adjust. We'll see what are the strengths of it. What are the, what are the, the, um, 
glaring weaknesses, and I think we'll we'll put some guardrails in there. I think this will all settle in. I think the same thing is going to happen with NIL when when that changes. It's going to be really messy for a few years, and I think we'll all settle in. Thanks, Jay. You got it. All right, that wraps it up, Coach, for you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Hey, Justin, how you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I wondered if you could uh, detail how tough a year this was for you yourself going through um, the various quarantines and isolation and you know, being not able to see your family or friends. Uh, what's this whole year been like? Yeah, it's definitely been uh, challenging and very different, um, not just for us, but for everybody in the country, um, trying to adjust to this quarantine and the uh, virus and stuff. Um, but it's just another another challenge we had to, had to accept and had to push through um, and be with my teammates and coaches and working out in basketball and trying to get better each day. It made it a lot easier than what it would normally be. So I'm um, just looking forward one day at a time. And coach told us, uh, uh, coach told us he talked to you guys today. Um, what, what kind of lessons did he impart on you and, and what are you taking away from this season as you go into the off season? Yeah, a big lesson was just, um, of course, attitude and also uh, not letting the world tell you um, about yourself. Um, we all know what we were able to do um, behind closed doors, um, working out together, pushing each other, fighting through a lot of different challenges that we face. Nobody on the outside really knows that except us. So just us staying together as a unit, that was the best thing that we did this year. Thanks, Justin. Terry, go ahead. Hey, Justin, thanks for your time. Did you know, did you learn anything about yourself that maybe you didn't know? Um, definitely a lot of uh, going through this year, um, the, the toughness you had to you had to be able to overcome, um, not being able to go see your family, uh, hanging out, doing other activities, um, staying with, with, with the team only and stuff like that. Um, I've never had to do that before. So the mental toughness part, um, it really shows who's mentally tough and who's not, and we were able to show that. And, and what about this team moving forward? You're, you're probably going to be losing a lot of guys. Do you like where this program is moving forward? Oh, definitely. Uh, um, Everything is a lesson. So this year was a, a lesson learned. Um, all the games we had, all the practices, we learned a lot, and we just gained a year of experience for all of us. So I think going moving forward, whoever we lose or – Whatever happens, I think we'll still we'll still be a great team together. Um, we fought through adversity, and we know what we can bring to the table. Thanks, Justin. Austin, go ahead. Justin, you mentioned the whole toughness and, and mental toughness part of the season. Do you think, having gone through this season, and you and your teammates having gone through this season, you think that brought you guys a whole lot closer than any other season usually would? Maybe. Oh, it definitely did because we have to be with each other at all times. So all you could do is bond with each other on and off the court. I think those bonding times on and off the court, it brings you closer to um, together and want to get you finally reach your goal in the end. And real simple one for me, um, heading in this off season, what's something you're going to look to improve on in, in your game? I'm just being more of a leader, um, vocal leader, and I'm um, being a better um, point guard for my team. Um, that's something I'm really focus on. Um, and then all the little things that we do each and every day, um, defending, rebounding, all that stuff, it never stops. But really focusing on being a, a leader and more vocal leader. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Joe, go ahead. Uh, Justin, what did you learn uh, from Colin in the two years you played with him? Yeah, I really learned he's a great point guard and he, he's real vocal. And then that's something I really, I really need to uh, I learn from him and just seeing how much of a leader he is on and off the court. He's a great captain we have. So those are things I look up to him and I try to learn from him. And how involved was he after his injury with you guys, uh, either talking to you on uh, Zoom or FaceTime or whatever? Yeah, he's always involved with us, um, whether it's in the group chat, texting us or FaceTiming us. And he's giving us all lessons and what each and, us, each and every one of us need to do in order to, to win this game and this and that. So he's always giving out great pointers, especially to myself since we're guards so he's always talking to me so it was great having him thanks 
Does anybody else have a question for Justin? If so, just raise your hand right in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jeremiah, during this season, you had to you know, occupy many roles, you know, on the floor, off. How much do you think this is a, a, le a lesson in preparing you for the next level? Yeah, this this year was very unique, and I feel like the reason I came back was just to mature and just expand my game and just become an overall better player. And I, I wanted to experience the full Villanova experience, even though it was different, but we did get to uh, play in the Big East tournament and the NCAA tournament. So it, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And I think this year, just it, it was a great experience for mental toughness and just to become a more mature player. And as you look back on the season, on the basketball court, what do you think was your best moment? The best moment? I mean, I would think just going out and playing in the NCAA tournament since we didn't, since we weren't able to last year, since we had a really good unit last year. But I think it was just so much. It was a lot of fun going through the tournament with, with my brothers because we go out there every day and just try to play Villanova basketball the best we can. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Harry, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah. Hello. Have you have you given thought to your future? You know, there's – a lot of speculation. You tested the waters last year. Have, have you started talking to your family and coach about that? Um, uh, a little bit, but I mean, I just kind of, it's been our first day kind of just getting back from the whole year of being in a bubble and just, just dealing with all that. So I've just kind of been relaxing and I was able to see my mom and just kind of just be able to enjoy those moments. But then, yeah, but for sure, we'll, we'll sit down with my mom and with the coaches and just talk about just my future and where that will lead. What was the most difficult part about this year? Just not being able to see family and friends? And yeah, it, it would definitely have to be that. I, I love being around my mom and my family and, and just kind of just being in our room secluded a, a lot. A, a, pretty much the whole whole season was was pretty tough. There were days where it was low, but then you just realize that you have you have great people around you and you love the game of basketball too much to let it really get to you. You just have to just have a great attitude. You, you can control that, but you can't control everything else going on. So just having a great attitude is so important this year. Was that sacrifice worth it? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Hey, you got to experience a lot of college basketball. I guess what would be your advice to maybe a, a recruit coming up who is maybe thinking about skipping college for the G league or something, or, or going to college, what would you, what would you, how would you advocate college, the college route? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of great coaches and I think coach Wright is one of the best out there. It's just preparing you for that next level and just, just making you a full of uh, uh, all round player and not just focusing on just, you're only good at this. So we'll make you good at that, but just making you the best player you possibly can be while playing Villanova basketball. And I think it, it's a great experience as well. And I think, it's just, it's, it's sometimes it's bigger than basketball, just being able to have that college experience that you might not be able to ever experience. So I think just that experience and then just coach, right. It is just a great coach and just maturing you to become a great man and just a great all around basketball player. Was March Madness everything you thought it would be? Yeah, I think even though it was still its own unique March Madness, I think it, it was a lot of fun, even though there weren't a lot of media around or fans, you could still just kind of just feel the aura of it. Like, wow, like, like just we're really playing in March Madness and I've watched this my entire life. And now being, now being able to be a part of that was just a lot of fun. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Austin, go ahead. Jeremiah, we talked to Jermaine after the, the Baylor loss and, and I asked him, I'm like, what was the mood in the locker room? And, and he said, you know, it wasn't necessarily a sad mood. It was, it was you guys were grateful that you were able to play and you were able to play in the season. Can you kind of echo that sentiment? Yeah, no, he's he's absolutely right. It, as a competitor, you you never want to lose, and especially when when we had a great unit and we could have we could have done special things, and we did do a lot of special things. We just we just we take a lot of pride in just playing Villanova basketball for forty minutes, and I think. We could definitely go into the locker room after that game and re and look at each other and, and tell each other that we did go out there and gave it our all and we we had no regrets, especially at the end. And that was our end game ending, uh, our, our season ending game. So we definitely could look at each other eye to eye and say that we gave it all we got 
and like, we were just super proud of each other and just supportive, even though it was a sad ending, but it, it, we, it, we just know we just gave it all we got every single night and, and also in practice. All right, thanks, Jeremiah. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah, congrats on a great year. It was, it was really fun watching you guys this year. Thank you. Um, you know, I think we've talked about this before. Villanova has seven or eight guys in the NBA. You know, none of them were one and done. They all spent a couple of years with Jay and, and the program. If you do decide to turn pro, how much do you think it will help you, you know, that, that you've been there multiple years? And do you stay in touch with the guys in the NBA, like uh, Josh and all the older guys? And, and what kind of feedback do they give you about how Villanova prepared them? Yeah, I think I think even before um, when I was deciding what school I want to go to, you kind of look into the long term, but don't get caught up in it. I, my, my, a big thing for me is just staying in the moment and just taking one day at a time instead of looking at that far, far, far end goal, even though it, it's, in, it's in sight, but not getting too caught up in it. So it distracts you from getting better each and every day. And I think it just goes to show the coaches, staff and how great of a job they do in preparing you for the next level and, and they don't they don't try to prepare you oh this is for the nba they prepare you for the moment and they know it leads to that so just just being in the moment is so important and i think i think they do a great job at that and i think you, everybody can just see for themselves that villanova players are just prepared going into the nba and they, and they do a great job and they're so focused on the little things and they, they have all the all the um talent and ability that, that the NBA likes. And I think that those things just, it just shows that the coaching staff just does a great job in developing players. Thanks a lot and good luck. Thank you. Joe, go ahead. Uh, Jeremiah, in this difficult season, um, what life lessons did you learn? And, and did you learn anything about yourself that you didn't really know uh, prior to the season? Yeah, I would just say, just don't take anything for granted. You mean, nobody was expecting COVID-19 to come out almost a year from like a, over a little over a year from now. And then especially all this turn of events and how no fans can come to games and then expecting our season to not being able to see family for five to six months. So I think just, just be appreciative for everything you have and just be grateful for all the opportunities you have and just give it your all every single day. And I think what I learned about myself is that I, I'm mentally, mentally capable of, of doing anything. I feel like if you're able to go through the, these times of being secluded for that long and not seeing friends or family and just being so locked in on the thing on, on the task you love to do you, you're able to accomplish whatever you want because you can put your mind to it thanks jeremiah good luck with your decision whatever it is thank you i appreciate that does anybody else have a question for jeremiah so just raise your hand all right that is all thank you very much thank you Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Mike.